those white folks, of course, are behind the white hope. The Brady's the redeemer of the race, and so on. But you, Jack Jefferson, are you the black hope? I'm black and I'm hoping. <laughs> Any idea, Jack, why you smile when you fight? I'm a happy sort of person and it always feels good when I'm fighting. Great 70s sports movies. When you're not watching your favorite western, what do you do? Perhaps you take a look at your favorite sport, or even better, a movie about your favorite sport. I thought I'd take a look at some great sports movies of the 1970s today. Why not? Let me know if this is something you'd like to see more of in the comments. If you enjoy this video, hit the notification button to get my new videos. If you want to check out my many other videos, head over to my channel. The link is in the description. Please take a moment to like and subscribe to the channel as well. I appreciate it. Let's get into it, in no particular order. Fat City, 1972, directed and produced by John Huston. Stars Stacey Keach, Jeff Bridges, Susan Tyrell and Candy Clark in her film debut. The plot follows a former champion boxer, Keach, who begins to develop a rivalry with a younger fighter, Bridges, on the rise, whom he is training. The supporting cast features several real-life boxing personalities, including Art Argonon, Curtis Cox, and Al Silvani. If you want to win bad enough, you win. There ain't no way in hell this dude's gonna beat me because he's too old, I'm too fast, I'm gonna be all over him. I'm gonna kick his ass so bad every time he takes a bite of food tomorrow, he's gonna think of me. He's gonna know he's been in the fight because I'm gonna hit him with everything. I'm not just gonna beat that mother, I'm gonna kill him. Slapshot, 1977, directed by George Roy Hill, starring Paul Newman and Michael Ontkeen. It depicts a minor league ice hockey team that resorts to violent play to gain popularity in a factory town in decline. Slapshot received mixed reviews upon release and was only a moderate box office success. It has since become widely regarded as a cult film. Life was a dyke. No. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. Jesus Christ, no wonder he flipped his leg. Anybody call my old lady a dyke like a fucking banana. His wife is a dyke. Rocky, 1976. Directed by John G. Avildsen. An independent sports drama written by and starring Sylvester Stallone. The first installment in the Rocky franchise. Also stars Talia Shire, Burt Young, Carl Weathers, and Burgess Meredith. Rocky Balboa, Stallone, a poor small-time club fighter and loan shark deck collector from Philadelphia, gets an unlikely shot at the World Heavyweight Championship, held by Apollo Creed, Weathers. Breaking Away, 1979, produced and directed by Peter Yates, a coming-of-age comedy drama, a favourite of mine. An early role for Dennis Quaid. It follows a group of four male teenagers in Bloomington, Indiana, who have recently graduated from high school. Stars Dennis Christopher, Dennis Quaid, Daniel Stern in his film debut, Jackie Earl Haley, Barbara Barry, Paul Dooley and Robin Douglas. In an AFI poll, Breaking Away ranked as the eighth best film in the sports genre. He was as normal as pumpkin pie, and now look at him. But Dave's not crazy. He's never tired. He's never miserable. He's on the road to adulthood. When I was young, I was tired and miserable. You are numero uno, King Papa. And he's decided to take a little detour at the age of 19. What are we going to do about it? I 
don't know, dear. We could always strangle him while he's asleep. <laughs> An imminent danger of turning 20. All right! Bravo! How you doing, guys? Well, we're a little disturbed by the developments in the Middle East, but... ...who refuse to give up immaturity without a fight. Smart move, Shorty. I'm in love. Wanna wind up a bum. Italian bum. I'll tell him he either has to get a job or go to college. Hell, I don't want to go to college, Dad. The hell with them. What, are you afraid? A little bit. The only thing I'm afraid of is wasting the rest of my life with you guys. I thought that was the whole plan. That we were going to waste the rest of our lives together. I'm leaving soon. Thank you. I wish you a nice trip. Me too. I'm not going anywhere. I don't know about that. The Great White Hope, 1970, directed by Martin Ritt, a biographical romantic drama starring James L. Jones when he wasn't giving voice to Darth Vader, Jane Alexander, Jester Morris, Hal Holbrook, B. Richards and Moses Gunn. Jones and Alexander received Best Actor and Actress Academy Award nominations for their performances. Based on the true story of boxer Jack Johnson and his first wife, Etta Terry Durier, and the controversy over their marriage and Duryea's death by suicide in 1912. White Hope won two Antoinette Perry Awards for Best Actor. I'm the White Hope. Brady's the redeemer of the race and so on. But you, Jack Jefferson, are you the Black Hope? Uh -uh. I'm black and I'm hoping. <laughs> Any idea, Jack, why you smile when you're fighting? I'm a happy sort of person and it always feels good, huh? <laughs> and when I'm fighting, I feel double good. So what do I want to put a face on for? <laughs> and, 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 besides, it's a sport, right? Like a game. Well, I like whoever I'm hitting to see that I'm still his friend. For best actress. Why can't you wait and give me one chance to make you happy? Only one! I swear I've never had one! I'm gonna fight! It's my turn to be the champion of the world. I'm taking my turn. Chitlerk? I'm a federal marshal, Jefferson. At 10 a.m. this morning, you drove Miss Eleanor Backman across the Illinois-Wisconsin state line. Having done so, you proceeded to have relations with her. Under the Mann Act, that makes you liable. Therefore, I'm placing him under arrest. And it also won the New York Drama Critics Award for Best Play of the Year. You're not your own man anymore, Jack. Oh, now you're old. How can you be your own man when they have you? They do, and you know it. A devastating play becomes an unparalleled motion picture. Every time you push that pinched up face in front of me, I see where it done got me. I don't want to give you nothing, you understand? I'll cut it off first. Hombre. You give me a break, for God's sake. The Champ, 1979, directed by Franco Zeffirelli, a neo-noir drama sports film, a remake of the 1931 Academy Award winning film of the same name, directed by King Vidor, stars John Voight as Billy Flynn, a former boxer who attempts to support his son, Ricky Schroeder, and reconcile with his ex-wife, Faye Dunaway, by fighting in the ring again. Wake up! 
The Longest Yard, 1974, directed by Robert Aldrich, a prison sports comedy drama starring Burt Reynolds, Eddie Albert, Ed Lauter, Michael Conrad, and James Hampton, follows a former NFL player recruiting a group of prisoners and playing football against their guards. It features many real-life football players, including Ray Nitschke of the Green Bay Packers. I know what I'm doing. Work once. Ought to work again, right? All right. One more, one more time. And dirtier. I think he broke his neck. Big Wednesday, 1979, directed by John Milius. A coming-of-age buddy sports comedy drama stars Jan Michael Vincent, William Catt and Gary Busey as California surfers facing life and the Vietnam War against the backdrop of their love of surfing. Raised in Southern California, Milius made Big Wednesday as a homage to the time he spent in Malibu during his youth. Milius and his friends, George Lucas and Steven Spielberg, famously agreed to exchange a percentage of Big Wednesday, Star Wars and Close Encounters of the Third Kind prior to the release of the three films during 1977 to 1978. Spielberg in particular was certain that Big Wednesday was going to be a box office hit. It was like American Graffiti meets Jaws, two of the decade's most successful films. the moment of truth. Now is the time of decision. Pumping Iron, 1977. Directed by George Butler and Robert Fiore. A docudrama about the world of professional bodybuilding. Focuses on the 1975 Mr. Universe and 1975 Mr. Olympia competitions. Centered on Arnold Schwarzenegger and one of his primary competitors for the title of Mr. Olympia. Lou Ferrigno. Also features bodybuilders Franco Columbu and Mike Katz, with appearances by Ken Waller, Ed Corney, Serge Newbert, and other bodybuilders of the time. More way, let's go. Oh, I beat him! He goes, you pose down with him. Let the judges make a comparison. You look at your arms like you're admiring, and then you go, this. I will mix him up. He will be ready to lose. I called my mother yesterday already and I said I won. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think in the comments. I appreciate your likes and subscribers. Hit the notification button to get my new videos. Take a look at my channel and check out my Facebook page. The links are in the description. I am Wrangler. Bye for now. See you again soon. Interesting facts about famous people.